And if you're a PC lover, you may want to look away right now because, uh, yeah, this is this is this is brutal. I don't even feel right doing it, but I feel good doing it. Does that make sense? But yeah. Hey guys, Joe here, and today we are taking a look at the Dell, which I promised you yesterday. And I do apologize if it takes a little longer to come out than planned. I'm actually editing it on this actual computer because my computer is still rebuilding all the stuff onto the hard drives. I keep saying rebuilding, that's the wrong phrase. I'm re-downloading and reinstalling everything that was originally on my hard drives. Great way to open with it, not booting into Windows. All right, taking a look at the BIOS, you can see here it is an XPS 6301 or 630i, pardon me, I don't know why I said that, I've never said that before. It has BIOS revision 1.0.13, that was the latest one that was released for this system, and yes, I've already flashed it. It has 8 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM installed. That's pretty cool, and it does run in dual channel, which is also really cool. It's only at 800 megahertz. Boo! We'll talk about why I don't have faster RAM in there yet. Uh, it's a Core 2 Quad Q9550 running at 2.83 gigahertz. We'll be talking about why that's a boo. Looking at the BIOS, this is a NVIDIA 650 SLI motherboard or chipset. However, it really isn't because even though it does have overclocking features and you can overclock things like the RAM and the front side bus and supposedly the ratio like up here under CPU feature, it says CPU clock ratio, enable the unlock, great. But when you apply any kind of overclock to this motherboard with this BIOS, it does not work. And I'll tell you, I spent over three hours looking for somebody that might have written a hacked BIOS or any way of overclocking on this motherboard. So if you know of a file or a BIOS that I can download that will enable the actual functions on this motherboard, let me know. I do also have to go in and maybe try my Windows Vista hard drive because this system was originally created for Vista. And then I might be able to use NVIDIA Intune, but then this would become a Windows Vista machine. So it, uh, that'll be a follow-up. As it's booting into Windows, you'll notice that I do have a couple of different parts in here. Number one, I did put an SSD, which just has my Windows 10 clone on it. My Steam games library, as well as a different graphics cards, just graphics card. That's one card for testing purposes, because the other cards that were in there are just quite frankly too damn old. This is what was in there in Crossfire. These, these, these card, these card right here. So this card is an ATI Radeon HD 4850 with 512 megs of DDR3, GDDR3, which is better than just you know like original GDDR. But it's just it's not good enough because most games, especially on this motherboard, which doesn't enable Crossfire or SLI correctly, it's only trying to run on one card. For a quick Side note, I was able to run games like CSGO at 720p and got upwards of 70 to 80 FPS at 720p low, but like Grand Theft Auto 5, whether I ran it in 1080p, 720p, 900p, didn't matter what resolution I was getting in the high teens to low 20s. Which, again, considering that this system came out four years before it was released on PC, or maybe even five years before it released on PC, it's actually pretty impressive. Now it's a little rat's nesty in there, and that's because a couple of reasons. Number one, that power supply, which is a Dell OEM 750 power supply, is non-modular, not even semi-modular. It really wasn't a thing back then. So all the cables for all the peripherals as well as upgrade paths are installed, and then they just kind of hang out. You can try to tuck it behind things, but there's not a lot of room. There's no management tray or management area behind the motherboard tray, which is something I've been thinking on because I want to kind of keep this system, but I want to make it a little bit more user friendly, especially if I change out the power supply. A couple of interesting things, it does have a fan on the north bridge and I'll be stealing that for whatever I wind up uh, replacing this motherboard with, unless I can find a hacked BIOS. The CPU cooler, I did not realize that's actually the fan, so it doesn't need an auxiliary fan, it runs at the same temp even if there's another fan installed because of speed differences and density of the cooler only allows a certain amount of cooling anyway. 
It does have a couple of interesting things. They're kind of hard to see here, but these two black things, this is just a big fan. It's a 120 millimeter fan, and this is a also a 120 millimeter fan, and they're in enclosures to help draw air in. This one draws air in past the hard drive, supposedly to keep them cool. This one just draws fresh air into the case. What that means is, if you were a custom PC builder and you wanted to build a sleeper, you put a nice modern system in here and water cool it and you can put a 280 millimeter radiator in here. 240 would fit for sure, 280 might be a little bit of a squeeze. And you'd still maintain your drive cages up here. And it does have three spots up here. It has a DVD rewriter in there now, which I'll probably put my Blu-ray player in there since it has room for it blank one and then a room for a three and a half inch which would probably be populated with a card reader of some sort if I decide to continue on with this build. I may just turn this into the ultimate Windows XP machine and put it on uh, a different motherboard. We'll see. And again it all comes down to whether or not I can overclock it all. Now when you're looking at the motherboard as it's oriented in this case it's actually flip from the standard that's why we're on the right side of the case if you're looking at the front of it and you can see that it just uses a standard layout. This is a full ATX, it might even be an EATX motherboard, but it fits in there fine. It uses standard bays for expansions and things like that. It doesn't have room for a 120 in the back, but I think I have a 90 or even a, an Xbox One or Xbox 360 double 75 millimeter fans that I can wire in there and then I'd have some exhausting air. So here we are at the desktop, and as I said, I am running my copy of Windows 10 on it. I think somebody had upgraded this computer to Windows 10 at some other point because it n never pops up with a this is not genuine Windows notification, which is, I guess, a good thing. But let's go ahead and run a Cinebench. This may take a couple of days, so I'll fast forward through this. So this is going to take a while, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away and I'll come back when the Cinebench is done running. There we go, it's completed the run. For your reference, it took 2 minutes and 30 seconds to run the test, which is quite a long time. But that's what happens when you have a somewhat weak quad core. And as you can see, I'll zoom in on the score, you returned a 279 CB score, which actually puts it on par with a basically stock AMD A10 7860K. Now if I overclock the RAM to a thousand megahertz, which I've tried, it does return a 300 point score. So it is right on par with a three gigahertz overclock on a Q66. It's also equal to what the AMD 7860K does with a four gigahertz overclock. So it's not terrible. And what it comes down to, and I've said it in previous videos, I'll say it every time it comes up because it's important that you understand why some of these quad cores are so slow, is that they don't have level 3 cache. Level 1 cache is where it feeds all the information to the CPU and everything gets processed. Level 2 cache kind of pre-orders the information to send to the level 1 cache. So this is your first buffer that feeds into the main distributor. Level 3 cache is a slower cache than level 2 normally, but because it's so big and it's so far down the stack that with the information it's feeding to number 2 has time to get sorted out before it feeds into level 1. So without level 3 cache, you're just banking on level 2 to do all of the heavy lifting. It's kind of, if you try to lift a heavy object straight up versus using a lever or a pulley system, it's slower and harder for the CPU to handle. That being said, the Q9550 does have 12 megabytes of level 2 cache as opposed to the standard, I believe, 6 megabytes on a Q6600. It might be 8. Correct me in the comments. It's been a while since I messed with one. If it had level 3 cache, I think it would be closer to a 450 or possibly a 500 Cinebench score when overclocked. We'll see once I get a board that I can overclock on, preferably one that uses DDR3, and then we'll revisit that. But, how does it work for everyday usage? And I guess that's an important thing we need to look at. Pardon me, sorry about it being blown out from the last one. I had to adjust the white balance. But we're, here we are on my YouTube channel, and let's just open up one of my videos here. It's probably going to start playing an ad because I have advertisements. Oh, no, there we go. Now, as you can see, playback seems to be fine. I'm using a GTX 750 Ti, just so you guys know what one is in there. 
And with that, let's see if it starts dropping frames. It's already dropped a few as it was loading in, but let's see how it runs for a second here. Check that video out, by the way. I expanded a Corsair AIO. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, it's not dropping too much. It did drop a few frames in the beginning as it was buffering, but now that it has an almost one minute buffer on it, it seems to be doing better. So, as you can see, if you upgrade the graphics card a little bit, you wind up with a better uh, experience. Loading pages like MSN, which has lots of different pop-ins because all these are different uh, active clickable buttons and poles and all that stuff, that seemed to load up plenty fast enough. Let's take a look at something like uh, Nerdflix. Yeah, that seems to be loading up fine as well. Not going to play much. I just wanted to see what the uh, buffer looks like. And the buffer seems fine. So, yeah, all in all, I think we're doing good. Don't know if you guys care, but when I run this 750Ti, it only has one gig of GDDR5. But when I run this one, I have uh, sliders for temp and power and voltage all the way to the right. Normally I don't know why that one dropped down on the temp. But core clocks, I always add a little bit to that and I usually run the fan on manual. I don't really care much about noise and I'm sure you can hear it a little bit but I think that's actually the system fan that you're hearing. Thinking about it now, it may cause an issue on this computer because I'm reloading my Steam library on my other computer so if it does, we'll have to skip some of the testing. It's downloading some stuff so I'll be right back. Well, after several restarts, because I didn't allow the system time to update before I tried hitting it with large loads, I uh, finally got it through Skydiver. The problem, obviously, was you had Windows module installer and security anti-malware and all these other things trying to run at the exact same time. And again, four core, four threads, although technically not really. It's more of an AMD situation for those of you that know what some... Uh, simultaneous multi-threading is, SMTs on AMD chips are, basically what they did was they took two quad-core like E8400s and put them on the same die and then they call it a quad-core because they are working at the same time simultaneously but it's technically two dual cores working on the same chip. Means it's not really great for running many 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 different tasks plus the fact that I can't overclock the chip means that we're stuck at the 2.9 gigahertz ratio but it did complete ran a 8576 in skydiver is that good no no it really isn't but let's go into a couple of games here real quick let's go into uh everything has to update man we'll go into some csgo now as soon as it's done updating and play a level or two and see what the scores look like when playing it on a gtx 750 ti might be hard to see, so I'll be calling out the score up here in the top. Let's take a look at my settings menu. It's trying to run it at 1080p high. Let's not do that. Let's run it at 1080p medium, as I think that will be a little bit better for such a uh, mediocre powered chip. Anisotropic, let's drop that down to 4. MSAA, we'll go to 2. Yeah, let's see what happens. I have a feeling that should bump us up. We're going to leave it at 1080p though. Greatest mouse pad in the world. Now what we're looking for is the combination of CPU usage as well as GPU usage. If the GPU is just getting stomped because the CPU can't keep up, we'll know. If it's the other way, then we'll know. So we're automatically dropping under 60 FPS as soon as we start. And we're definitely CPU bound. I can tell you that for a fact because the GPU is only running at 800 megahertz. It only does that when it can't get enough stuff to process. Shoot, almost out of ammo. Hmm. 
Anybody else ever die on the first screen? Me neither. But yeah, anywhere from 40 to 65 FPS in this opening level, or the opening part of this. Yeah, it looks like based on what I was seeing, it was pretty stutter free, which means the CPU wasn't getting overwhelmed or it wasn't unable to provide enough information for the graphics card to use. But it was still an underwhelming performance because I know that the 750 Ti paired with a better processor can produce more than 100 FPS at 1080p. So it's definitely a CPU bound issue. Next, I'm going to run some Grand Theft Auto 5. And I'll run the benchmark, and we'll see what those averages look like. Here we are. We are running the benchmark 1080p, normal settings, no real population density to speak of. And as you can see, the CPU is absolutely maxed out, which it shouldn't be, because this is a test. It's a graphics test, but because of the fact that the CPU is maxing out at 100%, and only running at 2667, which I'll have to goof around with, it means that the graphics card is not being allowed to run to its limit. It's running anywhere from 30 to 40 percent right now, which is returning scores in the very bleh range. But I do have another test that I plan on running on this to see if it alleviates some of the CPU boundness. You'll also hear me not use the word bottleneck. I don't like the phrase bottleneck. I don't think it's used correctly. A bottleneck is different from a CPU or GPU bound situation. What I mean by that is being CPU bound means that the CPU isn't capable of pushing enough frames or pushing enough information for the graphics card to run at its full potential. That's different than a component waiting on another component that is giving too much information. That's when you get a bottleneck, when you have too much information from one source going into another source that can't handle that much at one time. You can see a glitch there where the Ferris wheel isn't working correctly, again, because of the CPU. And when you don't have enough down here to handle what's up here, that's a bottleneck. When you don't have enough coming out of here to feed this, that is being bound by one component or the other. And the GPU is not being bottlenecked, it's being CPU bound. This scene tends to give the best frame rate. I don't know why, probably because it has the least amount of pop-ins or the least amount of like structures and people until you get into downtown. And even there you're talking about 30 FPS. Still completely playable, and I'll jump into story mode when this is done with this test. But I know, again, that the 750 Ti, even with only one gigabyte of VRAM, is capable of much better frame rates than this, and it, you can see some stuttering there because the CPU, again, is locked at 98 to 100% at all times. You can see there in the background, all of that won't populate because it can't get the information from the CPU fast enough. I'm going to go ahead and just cancel the test. And once the system boots back into the game, then I'll go ahead and jump into some actual play and we'll see what happens. Welcome back, and let's do a little bit more live benchmarking. You can see just from when I'm moving around, there is screen tearing. And it's dropping down into the high 20s. Yes, I cheat. You'll have to learn to deal with that, guys. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of live testing here. As you can see, I'm running in the 40s right now. I'm just using some cheats to get into downtown quicker. It also shows what happens when you're moving fast. Wow, yeah, that, uh, that pop-in. What is this, a Nintendo 64? You can see all kinds of like things. I mean, I'm standing there and it isn't loading in yet, so. Let's see what happens when I get on a vehicle and try to move. You can see I'm already in the 20s. This is this is not really on what I would call a playable level. I mean, if you had no other choice and you really wanted to play the game, you could do it this way. But this just is, it's kind of bleh. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to go ahead and drop the resolution. 
I didn't want to, but I will. And we'll see if that improves frame rates much. No. No, it doesn't. So what I'm doing is I'm actually trying to put more of the load on the GPU itself and see if that does anything. So I've increased population density, population variety, automotive traffic density. No, not really. Although it is boosting to 950 instead of 836. But you can see this looks like early Xbox 360 quality. Yeah, you can see that the graphics card is actually only running at 30 degrees right now because it's basically sitting there going, oh, am I supposed to be doing something? That's weird. I don't, I don't know why you think I should be doing something. Yeah, if you had to muddle through and suffer through, I guess you could play it. And get roughly 25 to 30 FPS. Which, quite frankly, is 100% what I was expecting. All because of the CPU. So that does bring me on to the next thing that I was going to try, which was using a different motherboard. This is a Gigabyte uh, F. C, well that's Foxconn, they made it with Foxconn, GA EP45UD3P. I've had this motherboard for like two years, a year and a half, something like that. I picked it up, it had a quad-core Q66 in it, and I still have the chip, but the board itself never really worked right. Two of the RAM slots were iffy, the RAM that came with it was iffy, and I put my 9550 out of this system in here, hoping that maybe it was the Q66 fault, maybe there was a problem with the chip. But I think whoever owned this before had tried to goof around with it too much, and it doesn't work right. So, in fact, it doesn't work at all anymore. It stopped working. It went dead. I thought I killed the 9550. Thankfully, the 9550 still works. So, in order to stop myself from ever trying it again, and if you're a PC lover, you may want to look away right now because... Uh, yeah, this is this is this is brutal. I don't even feel right doing it, but I feel good doing it. Does that make sense? But yeah. These pins won't hurt nobody no more. Yeah. So I'll never try to use this motherboard again. It'll go to the dump next time I go. I also snapped the RAM that didn't work in half because dang it, I'm just that kind of a guy. Now I was going to try different cards. I was actually gonna put my 1080 on there but that would be completely ridiculous. But I think I may try, I'm gonna do it in a different video, but I may try to throw this thing on there. This is a uh, AMD XFX uh, GTR Black RX 580. Yeah, it's the GTR Black Edition, eight gigabyte 580. I got rid of my Sapphire because I got some good money for it, and then I got this for basically nothing from my buddy. I like these ones because these ones actually have removable fans with little clips on them. And it's just a pretty card. I didn't like it the first time I looked at it, but now that I see it up close, you know, I'm not a huge fan of these blades, but the card itself is very understated, so that'll be going into something. I was gonna, my dad was gonna put it in his computer, but it's too long. He's got one of those mini Fantex Evolve or Enthu cases but the way he has his drive cages in there, this won't actually fit. So that means I get a 580 to test stuff with. I was going to take his 570, but I'll just keep using this 580. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll wind up hooking this up into there and seeing how it works. If it works any better, we'll do a follow-up. Otherwise, I think the next thing I'm going to wind up doing with this computer is waiting and seeing if I can get a better motherboard. There were a couple on eBay that were pretty intriguing. There was an Asus motherboard, LGA775 socket that used DDR3. And I guess we'll see. I have to wait till the end of the month to do that. Uh, if you guys want have anything that you'd be willing to donate to the channel, let me know. Go to my about section and you can see my email there. Send me an email. Let me know if you have something that I could use to build a better system and we will make a video out of it. And then you get to see your leftover parts used in a video, which would be kind of cool. So, yeah. 
That's about it for the $3,000 Dell XPS 630i for now, until I decide to do some more stuff with it. I may just turn this into an, a Vista machine. That is a possibility. So if I do that, that'll be another video. If I wind up using the RX 580, that'll be another video. So there are some videos coming, so keep your eyes open for that. Give me a thumbs up if you like this one. As soon as my hard drive winds up getting all of my programs reinstalled, I will go ahead and start doing some more Fallout videos because I have to reinstall all the mods, as I said in the previous video from yesterday. That's about it. I'm going to get out of here. I have to go get something to eat and then just kind of uh, figure out what the next plan is for the next video. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.